Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. Today I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on a bunch of beauty products that I have fully used up including makeup, skincare, hair care, and body care. Per usual with my empties videos we have tons to talk through so let's just jump right into it. All right, we are going to kick this video off with all of my skincare empties and my very first skincare empty is another apostrophe prescription. This portion of the video is in partnership with apostrophe. I'm really excited about that because you guys know I love working with them. So let's talk about this quickly. Welcome to my nighttime skincare routine. I'm all cozy and ready to apply my apostrophe prescription. If you're new to my channel and you're not familiar with apostrophe yet, I'll give you a quick rundown here. So apostrophe is an online platform that connects you to an expert dermatology team and provides access to oral and or topical prescription medications. I personally have a topical prescription from apostrophe and it contains a combination of three different ingredients, which are tranexamic acid, spironolactone, and 0.1% tretinoin. Let's apply this while I share the rest. I feel like I get questions about my skin all the time, like not just in my social media life online, but also in real life, in public, from strangers. I was at a doctor's appointment recently and the nurse was like, what on earth do you do to your skin? It looks amazing. Was also at Sephora recently and had someone come up to me and ask about my skin as well. And while you guys know I love skincare and there are so many products that I would recommend whenever I am asked the number one recommendation that I have, which is also something I'm asked a lot, people are like, okay, if you could recommend one product, what would it be? And I say tretinoin every single time. Tretinoin is 100% the biggest reason why my skin looks like this. Not only is it incredible for anti-aging and preventing breakouts, but it also significantly improved the overall quality of my skin. So that is why my skin is so, so smooth and just not full of texture. But I love that you can get a prescription that contains not only tretinoin, but also other ingredients that can benefit you as well. So the prescription that you end up with will really depend on your personal skincare concerns. So whether those skin concerns include things like acne, hyperpigmentation, rosacea, or wrinkles, you can get started and get access to a personalized treatment plan by completing a virtual consultation through apostrophe. And if you would like to get your first consultation for $5 plus $5 off your first order, you can use the promo code Abby Young at checkout. My next skincare empty is the Geeking Gorgeous Mighty Melt Cleansing Balm. You guys know I have been loving this ever since they came out with it. I forget when exactly that was, but I pretty much fell in love with this from the very first moment I tried it because there's something about the texture that's just so, so nice. It's not greasy. It's not heavy. It's not one of those cleansing balms that's kind of like hard at first that you have to break down and kind of melt down. It's immediately soft and plush from like the initial touch, if you will. This is sounding weird. I just love reaching for this. I love the way that it feels when I apply it on my skin. It's super effective. It gets the job done. It's not a cleansing balm that I have to like rub aggressively with. It just, it works. It feels amazing and it's affordable. Can't go wrong with Geeking Gorgeous, you really can't. Another makeup removing product that I have used up is the e.l.f. Holy Hydration Makeup Remover. This contains squalane, hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, and panthenol. It does have added fragrance, so be mindful of that if you have really sensitive skin. This is something that I think is definitely good. Like I liked it, I didn't have any issues with it. However, this only has 4.3 ounces of product and it's something that I feel like I went through very quickly so I would just rather use a cleansing oil or a cleansing balm that lasts me longer and I feel ends up giving me more bang for my buck. Did the price of this go down? This is listed as only $7 right now and I swear to God I spent like almost double that on this. Am I making that up? Maybe not. I mean, $7 is obviously very, very expensive, not expensive, affordable. $7 is very affordable is what I was trying to say. My God. But even still with this only being $7, this is not a very big bottle. Like that's pretty small. And it's something again that I went through really quickly. So I would have to repurchase this often, which means that that $7 would add up and it would also just add hassle to my life to have to constantly think about repurchasing this. You know, like I'm trying to minimize hassle where I can, not at it. The last makeup removing product for this video is the Sioris Fresh Moment Cleansing Oil, which is significantly bigger. Like this size of bottle is what I'm talking about compared to this, which actually ends right here because that's 
obviously the cap. Plus a cleansing oil lasts me way longer than a makeup removing liquid like this. So not only is it bigger, it's just the type of product that lasts longer. This contains safflower seed oil, grape seed oil, sweet almond oil, camellia oil, and rice bran oil. So some very nice softening oils. But for some reason, this just does not work the best for me for makeup removal. I don't know if any of you have tried this and had that same experience, but I feel like it just didn't break down my makeup as much as I needed it to, especially compared to other cleansing oils that work a lot better for me. So I don't know, not one that I would say is bad, it's just not great, so I won't buy again. You guys know I have been loving the Skin Smart Antimicrobial Facial Cleanser, which is not actually a cleanser, it is a facial mist. I don't know why I acted like I was gonna spray that because this is empty. This contains hypochlorous acid, which is an antimicrobial ingredient and therefore very beneficial in preventing breakouts. If you're acne prone and you're looking for something non-irritating to add to your skincare routine, I would highly recommend looking into this. This is very affordable. You can pick it up on Amazon. So I would definitely recommend checking out something like this versus hypochlorous acid in other products from other brands that are significantly more pricey when really it's the same thing, just cheap. This is kind of an accidental empty because I spilled it and about half of it poured out so I would not have another one of these in an empties video so soon if I wasn't a klutz. But since I am, this is the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Breakout Serum. I absolutely love it. This is another addition to my morning skincare routine to help with breakout and texture prevention. It contains 2% salicylic acid, 3% lactic acid, niacinamide, zinc PCA, aloe, hyaluronic acid, and a postbiotic ferment. I love it. I cannot say enough good things about it. If you struggle with texture, blackheads, clogged pores, anything like that, I would definitely look into this. I have fully used up. <laughs> Clearly, the CeraVe Ultra Light Moisturizing Gel. This launched, I think, in the spring, early summer, and I basically just never stopped using it from the second I bought it. It is so, so nice. It contains niacinamide, ceramides, hyaluronic acid, cholesterol, vitamin E, and biosaccharide gum. It's a very lightweight gel that is ultra hydrating, not too lightweight, where you feel like it's not really doing much for your skin. And I just found this moisturizer to be very reliable this summer because no matter what I paired with it, the sunscreen, the tinted sunscreen, the makeup, it really worked well with everything and I never had a bad makeup day whenever I had this on. Well, unless of course it was because it was a bad makeup product mixed with it, but other than that, you guys know what I mean. Next up is one of my all-time favorite eye creams. It is the It Cosmetics Confidence in an Eye Cream. This contains cacao seed butter, niacinamide, caffeine, hyaluronic acid, amino acids, ceramides, and peptides. And I personally love using this at night because it's definitely a thicker, more occlusive cream. It's very like cushy and nourishing. And you guys know that I do not mess around when it comes to moisturizing around my eyes at night. So I will put this on and then my CeraVe healing ointment on top. And I just love that combination. And last for skincare, I have two sunscreens that I have fully used up. So first is the Suncut Super Waterproof Perfect UV Protect Gel. This is an SPF 50 with a combination of old and next generation chemical filters like octanoxate, polysilicone 15, uvinyl A+, and tinazorb S. Not really much to call out in terms of inactive ingredient highlights. This does have hyaluronic acid, some nice plant extracts like chamomile, and the texture of this is something that I absolutely love to apply. It's a very lightweight gel. It still feels hydrating, but it's one that dries down really quickly and I think is great for oily skin. However, I've recently realized that despite initially thinking that this was a great makeup primer, it's not in the long run. Because while it does dry down really quickly and basically work with anything put on top of it, it's one of those that I have found actually causes my makeup to break up a tiny bit on my forehead. For whatever reason, my makeup typically holds up really well from like bottom, I mean, the lower half of my face, we'll just say that. But if I am using something that causes makeup to break up or just doesn't allow it to stay in place all day, it'll always be exposed like here at the top of my forehead. You guys are gonna have to let me know if that happens to any of you as well, cause it's, I don't know, it feels random, but I did start to notice a correlation between that happening and me wearing this sunscreen, which was a huge bummer because again, initially I thought this was an amazing makeup primer, but 
not the best for long wear. And last is the Beauty of Jozon Relief Sun Sunscreen SPF 50. I mean, I've obviously used up every last drop of this. This is an SPF 50 containing Uvenyl A+, Uvenyl T150, Tinazorb M, and Uvazorb HEB. Plus, this one does have a lot of really nice ingredients added on top of those things like niacinamide, adenosine, green tea, rice ferment, soybean ferment, pumpkin ferment, and sugarcane extract. It really does have such a beautiful texture, so despite it seeming quite a bit thicker than some other Asian sunscreens, it still feels lightweight once you have applied it. It's moisturizing, it's super soft, it's just one of those sunscreens that I really, really enjoy reaching for, so I am definitely going to be repurchasing, especially as we're entering colder weather months, and I really appreciate something like this over a super liquidy gel like this. Hi, pumpkin. Can you see her? Can't tell. All right, let's move on to hair care empties. First up is the Oribe Run Through Detangling Shampoo. If you don't mind me, I'm just gonna smell the remnants in this bottle while I read the ingredients. This, like all Oribe products, has so many nice ingredients in it, specifically for, I would say, hydrating, replenishing, balancing the scalp, like panthenol, citric acid, gluconolactone, trahalo, xylitol, phospholipids, and several plant oils. I really fell in love with this a couple years ago when my bleach dam Damage was the worst it's ever been just like so extreme and that damage caused my hair to be extremely tangly which meant that it was really difficult to brush through without causing breakage after I washed it so I found this shampoo to be very helpful I was super skeptical about it when I first saw it I was like how much is this really gonna help to detangle my hair but surprisingly it worked really well like so well that this was the only shampoo that my stylist would use on my hair for a couple years when I went in to see her because she agreed my hair was so, so unbearably tangly and this really helped. So I don't have plans to repurchase this now because my hair is not tangly like that anymore because it's so much healthier, thank God. But if that is something that you struggle with, I would definitely recommend it. Two Pureology color fanatics, a big boy right here and a small size right here. I feel like I just, I have a couple more of these smaller size versions available. Why did I say that like that? Like I'm a store or something, I mean. My beauty room kind of is like a store. I have so many products in back stock just waiting to be used. So I have a couple more of these that I just had stocked up on from previous sales. But after that, I think I'm done buying this small one. I go through it too quickly. I just need the jumbo. This actually has like a tiny left down here. Mm, I'm gonna have to use that up. This is the Kerastase Genesis Defense Thermique. The names of their products are so fancy, I don't know how to pronounce them. This is supposed to be a fortifying blow dry fluid that helps weakened hair that is prone to falling due to breakage from brushing. Similar to Pureology Color Fanatic, this has the same first three ingredient highlights, which are water, coconut oil, and amyl dimethicone. Actually, same fourth one as well. Polyquaternum 37. So no surprise, I definitely thought that this was helpful in conditioning my hair and just helping to detangle without breakage. However, it definitely is a bit thicker than the Pureology Color Fanatic. It's a little bit creamier, which I think can be really nice if you have very, very coarse, frizzy hair. But something about this spray bottle mixed with that slightly thicker texture just wasn't the best match. I just feel like it doesn't spray out of this spray bottle in the best way. It's not the most even. It's not something that, I don't know, like... Yeah, evenly disperses all over your strands in the way that you want it to. It definitely wasn't terrible. It's just something that I noticed was bothering me, especially compared to all of my other leave-in conditioners that I don't feel do that. So while this definitely is good in terms of how it performs on my hair, I'll just stick with Pureology Color Fanatic since I like that better and it's not as expensive. There's something in my empties drawer that's leaking obviously because this has a nice layer of oil. Ew. Next up is a K18 hair mask. I'm still using this. I'm still loving it and still showing it to you guys in empties videos as proof. I feel like this actually lasts me so much longer than I would think it would based on how small this bottle is, but because I am in the maintenance phase of using this product and I don't use it every single wash, it really does last me quite a long time. And what they say about this is true. Less is more. You don't want to add a ton of this product. You don't want to add several more pumps than they recommend because it can kind of build up on your hair if you do that and sit on top of your hair and since it's not a conditioning product 
it's not gonna damage your hair, it's just not gonna make your hair feel good. So less is more, this really should last you quite a long time, and thank God for that, because it's expensive. Next up is a vial of a prey. This is a product that I have just felt confused about in terms of like how to proceed with it in my content, in my routine, because it's something that I definitely noticed a difference with. It makes my hair feel softer. It makes my hair look shinier. It's just something that makes my hair look immediately healthier. But I wasn't going to stop using K18 because of the amazing results that I've continued to see with that in order to use this instead. So I switched to this for a bit, then switched back to K18, because I was like, I don't know what to do. Like, yes, this makes my hair feel and look great, but I know that K18 has completely transformed my hair. Tra mm, transformed. <sighs> God, my hair over the last couple years, so I don't want to stop using that. So I actually had the chance to speak with the person who created this product, the inventor, the chemist, which is crazy to think about. And he actually said that K18 and a prey can be used together and they actually complement each other nicely. I was actually shocked to hear him say that and impressed because I feel like so many other brands will refuse to acknowledge their competitors. And I get why they do that. But at the same time, I think that when it comes to a category like this, there may be a product that people have fallen in love with like K18. And because of that, don't want to switch over to something else. So to hear that it's actually something that can be complementary to a routine that this already exists in, I was like, okay, say no more. I'm adding it. So I have, mm, how long has it been since I have had that in my routine again? I would say it's probably been like three weeks now that I have been using a prey in combination with K18. Keep in mind, again, I'm not using K18 every time I wash my hair. I have been using a prey every time. And I do have to say what I said before still holds true. It absolutely makes my hair feel and look healthier. I am really loving it and I'm excited to see my long-term results and using both of those products together. Okay, to wrap up hair, I have a few different dry shampoos here. First is the new and improved, allegedly improved. Oh wait, this says new look, same formula. I thought they said they changed their formula on some of these. They definitely did. What's going on? Maybe this is an old bottle. It's the Not Your Mother's Clean Freak Dry Shampoo, and this one is the Overnight Clean Freak Dry Shampoo. Not Your Mother's makes great dry shampoos, definitely some of my favorite at the drugstore. I am just not obsessed with this original fragrance. It's kind of like lemony, citrusy. I definitely prefer this Overnight one, but one that I recently got a sample of in PR is the Dove Advanced Dry Shampoo for Volume and Fullness, and I have tried maybe like one or two dry shampoos from Dove in the past that I did not like at all. They just didn't work for me. So I didn't have high hopes for this, but I was like, well, I may as well try it when I have the mini. And I love this. It just works so well on my hair with very minimal residue, very minimal white cast. And I feel like it doesn't make my hair look as dry and flat as some other dry shampoos. So definitely one that I'm going to purchase the full size in and I'll keep you guys posted on that full size. I mean, it should be the exact same thing, but I'll still keep you posted. But let's move on to body care. I feel like I go through body care so, so quickly. Number one, I do definitely think I overuse, like pour a lot out of every bottle I use, but also I'm five foot 10 and a half. So I swear that makes me go through things more quickly than someone who's like 5'2". I have more body to cover. First up is a philosophy shower gel in the scent Hula Girl. This was a really fun summertime scent. Oh, you guys know I love the way that philosophy products smell. This is amazing. I'm not gonna repurchase right now because it's definitely just like fruitier, more summery, but it's so good. Another that I am addicted to, the Tree Hut Tropic Glow shower what sparkling gel wash okay i love tree hut it's without a doubt one of my all-time favorite body care brands and this tropic glow fragrance ah uh, very similar vibes to sol de janeiro so delicious speaking of sol de janeiro trader joe's came out with their kind of attempted dupe at that this is their brazil nut body wash they also came out with was it a body cream, body butter in the same smell? It's definitely the same kind of vibe, but I prefer Tropic Glow. I think that that smells better. And while I liked this body wash, I don't feel the need to repurchase it since I like this one from Tree Hut better. 
And I can't remember if I talked to you guys about the body butter in a previous empties video, but that one I did not like at all. To me, it smelled kind of like salty, Play-Doh-y, and the texture just was not nice. So I would not recommend that if you were curious about it. I have three different Saltaire body lotions here. This is the Exotic Pulp Brightening Lotion, the Island Orchid Moisturizing Lotion, and the Seascape Reviving Lotion. Their body lotions have incredible ingredients, like the longest ingredients list ever with so many nice ingredients to call out. So I will just list them on the screen and not waste your time reading through every single one. But I was very impressed given that this is a lower price point brand. And I just love Saltaire's whole vibe. Their branding's amazing. The packaging is so cute. Their products smell incredible. And these body lotions are no exception. I mean, the fragrances are the same across the board when it comes to like body lotion, body wash. I like that they keep things continuous feels like the wrong word. But if you are interested in, let's say, this specific scent, then you can also get it in the body wash. They have a deodorant with it. I like that about the brand. So this exotic exotic pulp <laughs> exotic pulp fragrance is very bright and citrusy really nice island orchid is just a very nice orchid floral fragrance and seascape is my least favorite of the three it's definitely more of a traditional masculine scent in my opinion like it's definitely a good smell don't get me wrong it's just not my personal favorite i definitely want to use body lotions that smell sweeter, more like vanilla, birthday cake, things like that. So if you are interested in any of those scents I described or others, because they do have a lot more, then definitely check out Saltaire. Again, affordable, cute packaging, great ingredients, nice body lotions. You better believe I am still using the Cetaphil moisturizing cream. I have two tubs of this that I have completely used up. This is still my absolute favorite body cream to pair with self tanner because it really helps to preserve my self tan. And I also use this if I have a body cream or lotion that isn't the best in terms of like absorbing into my skin. I've definitely tried a lot of body moisturizers that just for whatever reason don't fully dry down and don't fully absorb. Do you know what I mean? Like you're rubbing them in and they get like stuck in that stage. So if I still want to use that lotion or cream because it smells really good, I'll just pair it with the Cetaphil moisturizing cream and then that combination makes it always apply great. Plus I get the good smell because this is fragrance free, unfortunately. I told you guys I love Tree Hut. I have three more products from them. First is the Shea Sugar Scrub in Frosted Cranberry, which originally was something that I wasn't obsessed with, but this has grown on me. Oh my God, why am I loving this smell so much? I feel like it reminds me of something, but I can't put my finger on it. So good, I need to rebuy this now that we are entering the holiday season here shortly. I also have two Shea Body Butters from them. This is in Midnight Glow. How would I describe this? I literally don't know. Yum. Orange, Jasmine, Peach, Raspberry. I was gonna say fruity, I think. Really nice, bright, fruity, slightly floral fragrance, but I prefer this one for sure, and it won't be surprising to you guys when you hear what it is. It is the Sweet Cream Body Butter. Oh my God. If you like vanilla, birthday cake, any of those kind of fragrance categories that I typically rave about, caramel, baked goods, you have to get this. I bought four since it's limited edition and their body butters are divine. They feel so amazing. They have perfect absorption, dry down, whatever you wanna say. What I was talking about earlier with other products, never an issue with the Tree Hut body butters. They're beautiful to apply. They feel so moisturizing, but they dry down. I don't know what else I'm trying to say. I feel like my brain is like this right now, but they're great. Trust me on that. And last for body, I have two different self tanners. The first is Get Into The Limelight, which I think is good. It's just not my personal favorite. I will list a video below where I include this in a showdown. It did not win that showdown, spoiler alert. So not one that I wanna repurchase. One that I definitely pran to pran. No. Plan to repurchase though is the Pita Jane self tanner, tanning mousse. This is beautiful. I feel like I use this up very quickly compared to other self tanners that I've tried that are still just like sitting in my collection because I don't reach for them as much because they just don't have that wow factor. This one does. I love it. The color is beautiful. It lasts a really long time. And I will also link a showdown where I show this to you in my description box below. All right, y'all. Let's wrap up this video with makeup empties. I actually 
actually only have four to share this time. First is the Sigma Soft Focus Setting Powder, which continues to be one of my all-time favorite setting powders. It's great if you're looking for something to help to control oils throughout the day that doesn't make your skin look super powdery. I already repurchased it already have been using the repurchased one. Next is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Bronzer. This, I mean, technically is not fully gone, but it is so crusty in there. It's time for this to retire. So this is a bronzer that I used to rave about all the time and I realized I wasn't reaching for this as much over the past summer and I was trying to figure out why and I got to the bottom of it. I absolutely love the fair shade for when I have, or I don't know if it's called fair, it's the lightest shade that they have. I love that when I don't have self tanner on for this skin tone right here. I feel like it works so well. It's very difficult for me to find bronzers that aren't too dark or too orange on me. That one is beautiful. But this medium shade is not one that I feel the exact same about. When I have self tan on, I have a different set of bronzers that I reach for since just things work differently, of course. And I feel like I was just reaching for everything else over this because the shade was just working a little bit more for me. So while I absolutely love this formula, it's, I would say it's definitely not sheer, but it's buildable, it's long wear, it's soft matte and finish and feel. It's beautiful. This shade is just like not quite right for me and they don't have very many shades. So I would love for them to expand that. I doubt they will right now. I don't know, I just don't see them doing that, but that would be great. And last, I have two different lip products that honestly, as I'm thinking about it, probably look exactly the same. I'm gonna swatch them. Oh man, why am I so predictable? Okay, they're not identical. I'm gonna give myself that. <laughs> they're very similar though. So first is the Sigma Renew Lip Oil in the shade All Hearts, such a gorgeous shade. And then the second is also a beautiful shade because it's almost exactly the same. It's the Lawless Forget the Filler Lip Plumping Line Smoothing Gloss in the shade Velvet. I feel like this is the fastest I've gone through a lip product in a really long time. I told you guys I discovered this, I think, in the spring and I was wearing this almost every time I did my makeup. It is so, so pretty. You guys know, I just, I love a nice, like slightly cool toned lip. So this one right here is Sigma and this one right here is Lawless. So obviously very similar, but I would say Lawless has more of a pink punch to it, whereas Sigma has more of a slightly muted brown undertone. They actually have a similar texture, I would say, in terms of being extremely glossy on the lips, a little bit stickier, but not uncomfortable to wear. I do think that the Lawless one is just slightly stickier than Sigma, but these are both great lip products, and yeah, I've already repurchased both in case you were wondering, because I can't live without them. All right, you guys, we are going to wrap up this video here. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Have you tried any of these products? Are you interested in testing anything out after watching this video? If so, as always, everything is going to be listed and linked in my description box below in order of mention. And if you enjoyed this empties video and would like to see more from me, you know the drill. Please don't forget to give this a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, click on that notification bell, and send my channel to a friend. Thank you so much for doing those things. It really helps to support me, so I appreciate you so much for that. Thank you for watching my videos. I love the freaking heck out of you guys. Where's Elsie? Elsie, come here. Come say bye. I love you so much. Thank you guys for watching my videos. Is that where I left off? Make sure to stay tuned for my next one because that will be up in a few days, but until then, Elsie's gonna be nibbling on my ears, and I hope you have a great few days. Right. Right. Right.